destroyed houses, broken destinies and stolen lives. This is the result of the Russian world for my native Chernihiv city. This region was under occupation and felt all the horror of Putin's war, but still remains a reliable northern outpost of Ukraine. Right here, in school number 18, I was wounded during an airstrike by Russian aviation. Igor is a historian from the northern Ukrainian city of Chernihiv. In the first days of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, he was forced to stop teaching and start defending the country from Russian occupiers. Broken ribs, spokes and plates in his legs, Igor will still need a year of operations to recover from injuries. Like most of our citizens, we came to defend our city, our Ukraine. Our guys suffered a lot, many died, because no one expected such an airstrike at half past three in the morning. My brothers immediately dug me up from the rubble and sent by car to the regional hospital. Chernihiv, a regional center in the north of Ukraine. It is only two hours away by car from Kyiv. This direction is the shortest route to the Ukrainian capital from Russia and Belarus. Chernihiv, according to the Kremlin's plan, was supposed to become such a logistics hub on the way to Kyiv at the beginning of the full-scale invasion. On the morning of February the 24th, 2022, residents of Chernihiv and nearby settlements woke up from the first shots. The Russian army shot the region and its administrative center with artillery while the column of invaders was moving in the direction of Chernihiv itself. The invaders stormed the city, but the soldiers of the territorial defense and the armed forces of Ukraine did not allow the enemy to break through. Having met fierce resistance, some Russians began to surrender. The Russian invaders, having stumbled upon the total resistance of the Ukrainian defenders, surrendered. An entire reconnaissance platoon of the 74th Motorized Rifle Brigade of the Russian Federation surrendered near Chernihiv. Bawery Zauzhny, commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine. Resistance to the Russian occupation in the Chernihiv region was provided not only by the soldiers of the Ukrainian army, but also by ordinary and often unarmed local residents. So on the fourth day of invasion in the small town of Korukyevka, people blocked the path of Russian tanks in a living column and forced them to back out. <laughs> Enraged by failure, the Russian invaders began to destroy the civilian population. Day and night, the Chernihiv region was bombed and shelled. On March 3, 2022, the Russian army launched an airstrike on residential buildings in the center of Chernihiv. 26 Ukrainian civilians were killed by that strike. On March 12, Putin's troops destroyed the Hotel Ukraine, which ironically stood on Avenue of Peace. On March the 16th, Russian soldiers shot 13 civilians who were standing in a queue for bread. The Russian army also deliberately tried to deprive local citizens of all possible conditions for existence. Russian occupation troops destroyed the power plant of the city, depriving residents of heat and electricity, hit the water supply system and bombed the road bridge through which people received humanitarian aid. Despite this, Chernihiv did not give up. Under pressure from the armed forces of Ukraine in early April, the Russians began to retreat. By the time of the deoccupation of the region in Chernihiv, 60% of the infrastructure and 40% of houses in the private sector had been destroyed. According to the Kyiv School of Economics, the Russian military caused damage to Chernihiv in the amount of more than $4 billion. Now the locals are rebuilding their hometown, even despite the threat of constant shelling from Russian territory. Reported by Diana Kulesnik, Yuhor Skorina, Anna Nichenko, UATV News.